So are you practicing and learning scales, but don't really feel like your lead guitar playing is getting any better despite all that effort? Well, you're not alone. I recently had a viewer ask me a great question. He said, Charlie, I've learned a lot of scales and I practice them all the time, but I don't really sound any different when I try to improvise a solo. Can you please explain to me how learning these scales is supposed to help my playing? And the real answer, well, it has two parts. The first part is there are some mechanical aspects of playing scales that lead to physical improvements much like an athlete doing sports-specific strength training. However, the real truth is just playing scales is not going to make you a lead guitar player unless you focus also on the second part of the answer. And that's tearing these scales apart and using them to practice your creativity. Now we're going to touch on both aspects in this video, and I'm going to show you a couple of the best practice drills that I've ever come up with for developing your creativity which is going to result in real gains for your lead guitar playing. So, okay, let's play some guitar. Practicing scales is often viewed as fundamental for all musicians, but for guitarists in particular, it seems to be the cornerstone of technical development. Practicing scales does offer substantial mechanical benefits for your guitar playing. Regular scale practice can improve your dexterity, your accuracy, the synchronization between your fretting and picking hand, your fretboard knowledge, and just your overall proficiency on the guitar. Let's quickly go through some of the mechanical gains you can achieve by practicing scales. Number one, enhancing finger strength and independence. One of the most immediate mechanical benefits of practicing scales is the improvement of finger strength and independence. Playing scales requires each finger to press down on the frets individually and with precision. Number two, it improves your finger dexterity and your speed. Scales are an excellent tool for developing finger dexterity and speed and practicing scales at varying tempos allows you to gradually increase your playing speed while maintaining control and accuracy. Another aspect of practicing speed is to cycle through different subdivisions like eighth note triplets, sixteenth notes, and sixteenth note triplets at the same tempo. And these changes in subdivisions within long solo passages can be really striking and it adds a lot of excitement to your licks. Number three, synchronization between your picking and fretting hand. This coordination is essential for clean, precise playing, especially at higher speeds, with the following caveat. You've got to be mindful and stay present when you're practicing. You've got to actually listen and observe and make sure you're being accurate. It's easy to go into automatic mode, stop paying attention, and basically further ingrain sloppy playing. How do I know? Well, here's a true story. Many years ago, I was studying with a great teacher and we were doing some pretty intense scale practice. I come in from my lesson, he asked me to go through some scale exercises and I just ripped through them, or so I thought. He looks at me and says, well, that was good, but do it again and this time play it cleanly. So I ripped through the exercise again and I give him a look like, how do you like me now? And he just sort of smiled again and once again said, that was okay, do it again and this time play it clean. I said, man, what are you talking about? And he kind of grins and reaches over and turns up the gain on the amp I was using. And then he reaches over to his console and hits record. So I play the exercise again. And we listen to the playback and it was terrible. With all that gain, all I could hear was string noise, fret noise, half missed notes. And while it was humbling and I was kind of crushed, it was a great learning moment. You can't just go on autopilot, zone out, wave your fingers around and think it's going to make you better. Learn to actively listen to your own playing and also get in the habit of recording your scale practice and being brutally honest with yourself about how it sounds. Number four, scales help develop the connection between our mind, our ears and our hands. Repetition of scales ingrains patterns into what some folks might call muscle memory allowing our fingers to move instinctively across the fretboard. Number five, it helps our fretting hand efficiency. And practicing scales encourages efficient hand movement. It can help us reduce unnecessary motion and tension. I have to again emphasize mindfulness and staying present. A great way to practice is to go old school and play in front of a mirror, or you could do it a more modern way and videotape yourself and watch the playback. 
You want to teach your fretting hand to use minimal motion between the notes. That's going to reduce fatigue and it's going to allow you to play faster. I used to practice for hours in front of the mirror just trying to move my hands and fingers as little as possible while I was playing. And I knew I was on the right track when people started to say things like, man, I watch you play and I hear all these notes coming out, but it doesn't look like you're doing anything. Lastly, scales help us develop fretboard familiarity. Practicing scales in various positions on the fretboard helps you become more familiar with the guitar neck. You can practice scales in a way that improves your ability to navigate between positions seamlessly, and that skill is essential for playing solos and improvising. I'm a big fan of position shifting exercises where you play through a particular pattern, and when you get to the highest note of that pattern, you shift to the next note in the scale and then descend through the next pattern. And we could do this on all of our strings. <laughs> Or we could practice it on as few as two strings. You want to focus on smooth position shifts and visualize the fretboard connections as you play these exercises. So this is all great. All of these aspects are big pluses for the mechanical side of your playing. But here's the problem that can arise from practicing scales. And if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If all you're doing when you practice scales is running them straight up and down, that's what it's going to sound like when you try to solo or improvise. It's just unreasonable to think, hey, I've been practicing these scales, I've been playing them straight up and down, so when I go to solo, I'm going to be able to instantly turn them into all sorts of slick rhythms and patterns and licks. That's not how it works and it's not going to happen. You've got to practice making up licks and phrases. So let me show you three awesome exercises for creatively turning scales into licks and phrases, including my new favorite drill for developing phrasing and melody. The first thing I tell you to practice is scale fragments as an alternative to running entire two octave or three octave scales. For instance, playing three notes per string patterns on two strings only. Let's play in E major and let's use the six note patterns on the B and E strings as an example. So starting at E on the fifth fret of the B string, we'd have these patterns for E major. Once you're familiar with the patterns and you can play them smoothly, start experimenting with how we might use each six note pattern as a basis for a good lick. Make up licks ascending through the pattern and then put some sort of a finishing touch, something melodic on top. You can make up other licks where we descend through a pattern and finish it off with a melody. As you're experimenting, you might stumble onto some flashy sequences like this that we could use somewhere. The point of the exercise is to play through part of the scale, but then have to use your imagination to finish the lick off with melody and phrasing. This is a great way to practice and build up your inventory of licks. Another great way to practice being creative is to start a lick by playing a major scale run, but mid lick, make yourself switch to the pentatonic scale and vice versa. Here's a lick where I play a descending six note major scale cell. Like we did in the previous drill, we're going to be up at the 12th fret, still in the key of E. And then I'm going to drop down to the 9th fret and start to ascend through the cell there. But after playing the first three notes on the B string, I'm going to go to the E at the 12th fret of the E string and then descend through some Eric Johnson style pentatonic quintuplets. I'm going to do this slowly. Here it is up to speed. Or 
Let's go the other way. We could ascend through the major scale starting at the E at the seventh fret of the A string. I'm gonna play it up to the F sharp on the 11th fret of the G string and then go back to D sharp at fret eight. And then I'm gonna ascend through a horizontal pentatonic pattern. So I'm now up at the G sharp at the 16th fret of the high E and finish it off with a little pentatonic flourish. Here it is over the track up to speed. It's a cool lick and you can find these kind of combinations all over the fretboard, but you gotta go looking for them. You've gotta experiment to get them sounding good. But if you do that, you're going to be rewarded. One last drill, and I came up with this one recently, but I really love it, and it is an even simpler spin on the first exercise that we did. We're gonna make use of the E major scale starting on the B string only. The drill is to play three successive notes of the scale, such as E, F sharp, and G sharp. That's the root, the second, and the major third. We're gonna add a little phrasing by bending or sliding the middle note of that three note pattern up to the third note. Or. And then to that pattern, we're gonna add another short phrase that ends on a chord tone. You can use other strings to finish your lick, but we wanna keep them pretty short. So with that first one, the root, the second, and the major third, I might do something like this to finish it off. Now, the second pattern we have would start at the F sharp and we'd have F sharp, G sharp, and A. And we could finish that little lick off with something like this. This drill is gonna teach you multiple things. You're gonna develop your ability to move between chord tones and non-chord tones. This is crucial to making your lines sound more interesting, and it's a great skill to develop. Now that first pattern we just played, we had the notes, the root, the second, and the major third. The second one we had the notes, the second, the third, and the fourth, and the second and fourth, they're non-chord tones. So we have a challenge, we've got to resolve back to a chord tone with the tag that we put on it. Don't overthink it. Use your ears to guide you. You're gonna come up with some great stuff. This is really gonna help you with your understanding of the fretboard because you're not just relying on some shape that you memorized. Having to end your licks on a chord tone is gonna to keep your brain constantly searching for an E, a G sharp, or a B, depending on which key you're in, and you're gonna to have to keep coming up with new ways to find them. The truth is, every time you make up a new melody to finish off a lick, you're improvising. And the more you do it, the better and better you're gonna get at it. I promise you, you're gonna come up with some really awesome licks. Video them, write them down, spend time polishing them. And whatever you do, keep practicing like this, build up a massive war chest of licks that you can use anytime you need them. I'm gonna do a little playing using this third drill over the backing track. Let's see how that sounds. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're looking at practicing scales a little bit differently and you've got some strategies for taking the scales you've learned, breaking them up and turning them into great licks and phrases. Hey, here's another video you should watch. It's got some really good non-scale soloing strategies that sound great. I know it's gonna help you playing. Happy guitaring and I'll see you again soon.